Hello, my name is Eddie Topic. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here is your weekly technical analysis of Paris Rapeseed, Winnipeg Canola and Malaysian Palm Oil. Paris Rapeseed. Between mid-June to October 2023, the market had been trapped between two congestion bands, one below 438 to 445 and three quarters, and another above between 513 and three quarters and 519 and a half. During this incarceration, the market constructed a head and shoulders top pattern with an extension to its second shoulder from mid August until the start of October last year. The problem the market suffered was trying to test down to the neckline of this pattern. It had been the sheer amount of force necessary to push clear down through this head and shoulders top neckline and try and fulfill the targets below. Now, what I mean by this is that we not only had the neckline to try and push down through, but nearby was also the previously mentioned congestion band between 438 and 445 and three quarters, containing the March, April and June 2013 highs at 442 and a quarter, 442 even and 438 even respectively. It looks as if prices have finally managed to break lower in early October, but the market turned back up and into the congestion and then fell away again, rolled up and fell away creating a small reverse head and shoulders pattern in October and November last year, before again sitting on top of the 438 to 445 and three quarter congestion band, yet again. This, for a while, not only moved the market away from a break lower, but into a possible false break lower territory. However, whilst this was all happening, there were, are, some key bearish pressures that prices have started dealing with ones which I detailed 15 weeks ago, and which I repeat now, and I quote, we have overhead a more diaphanous congestion band between 456 and three quarters to 468 and three quarters, a band that, has relatively, that was relatively easy to navigate than the others mentioned, but which has three key potential bearish pressures within it. They are declining short medium moving average, that's currently at 426 and a quarter. Then the medium moving average, currently 433 and a half and a declining long moving average, currently at 446 and a half. At least two of these three are descending to impact the market, and one should not take away anything from them, especially any efforts to pressure the market from above." End of quote. The short medium moving average ended up being the key bearish pressure. It had been impacting the market since early November 2023, and the build-up of bearish pressure and erosion of the bullish incentive eventually saw an initial break below the 438 to 445 and three quarters congestion band in late December last year, and a proper break lower at the start of January this year. Now, the move lower was not without incident, as the old lows from October 2023 caused prices to revert back up in mid-January up to the overhead congestion area. However, once up there, the market made a horn top in late January and we've moved three steps down and one step up ever since, making new lows and low closes not seen since early June 2023. This now brings us to focus some potential pattern targets I laid out some 17 weeks ago, plus some cautionary potential supports that are below. Thus, and I quote, for the head and shoulders top pattern, hence the primary target will be in the 400 zone, for secondary hard to reach target X1 in the 354 zone. Any move lower towards these would be very, very interesting, as we have alternate neckline one, well that's currently at 402 and three quarters, and alternate neckline two, currently at 406 and a half, both in the way, and both originate from this, the old November 2019 to February 2020 head and shoulders top. They're highlighted in bright red and green respectively. Additionally, there is the December 2020 low at 396 and three quarters, which is also in the way uh, on any move lower. I would further note that these three supports stopped the fall of this market back in May this year. 
And by May this year, I mean, of course, May 2023. And that's the end of the quote. One final point, and that is four weeks ago, I drew a small bearish end of November 2023 to mid January 2024 bearish shift pitch hawk to help show the bearish angle attack. The market has been very careful following this pitchfork lower, showing as it does the bearish angle of attack in reality. I've highlighted this pitchfork in dark blue, and the market is currently attracted to the declining middle time, currently at 412 even. However, the next week and a bit should be interesting as the middle time crosses down through the first of the rising alternate necklines. And I would suspect we may see something give way at that point. I also note how the short medium moving average is religiously tracking along the upper time currently at 425 and a quarter of the same bearish shift pitchfork, providing additional reinforcement if it was needed. And the declining medium moving average currently at 433 and a half is not that far away either. Winnipeg Canola. Last year, the key, pa key patterns here had been the July to late September lopsided double top, which we've seen reach down to both primary and secondary targets. Then below that is the neckline, specifically the neckline of the earlier mid-April to early July reverse head and shoulders bottom, currently at 670 even. After this is what I consider to be the most important recent pattern here. The late August to mid-November 2023 bearish shift pitchfall, highlighted in dark blue on my daily chart. I suppose you could also throw in some past patterns such as the short medium moving average, currently at 623.40, the combination of the October to November reverse head and shoulders continuation pattern, which is also an ascending triangle. But the bearish shift pitch hook is the key one. Now, this was not the, the, the ascending triangle, the bearish shift pitch hook as well. It's not the best looking version of such a pattern, but it nevertheless still worked. Okay, so 10 weeks ago, I said the following, and I quote, my concern with this move lower was that this could be seen as a precursor for a move down in the other oil seeds and veg oils. My thinking was that such a move could be seen as the market seemingly choosing to try and form a bearish halfway hesitation over November, with potential all the way down to even the 580 zone. This is not a done deal and I have not placed any targets below, but it's worth considering in the coming days and weeks. In the meantime, let's take a look at the break below the descending triangle and see what and where this leads us. Thus, a primary target was in the 676 zone, with a secondary hardest reach target in the 642 zone. In less than a week after the break lower, the market had reached the primary target and has not been too far away from the secondary, tar secondary target at 642. It's time now to see if the market makes this secondary target a reality. End of quote. In early January, the market achieved the secondary target. And as for the target for the late August 2023 today bearish half hesitation action down in the 580 zone, which I designated target X1, well, that was reached two weeks ago. Moving back now to the dark blue bearish shift pitch wall again. This has been excellent in showing the bearish angle of attack of this market since its inception in November last year. Specifically, it has been the upper time currently at 600 even, acting as a dynamic downtrend and upper bear channel line and the middle time, currently at 562.60, acting as a lower bear channel line. That have been superb, superb at showing the way lower. So what have we in the way lower that might slow, halt, and even turn prices up? Well, looking at it, not much. We have the December 2021 20, low at 567 even nearby, uh, but then, little it seems apart from the tines until the October 2020 low um, at 513.90. I think I misread this actually December 2020 rather than 2021. So it's December low at 560, December 2020 low at 567 even. And then the October 2020 low at 513.90. I would only once again add the following as a postscript to what I have already said. It is something I first said 10 weeks ago, and I quote, I would add this final thought. I'm increasingly becoming interested in knowing if this contract is really an indicator, a leader, if you will, of what the other oil seeds and veg oils may have to deal with, end of quote. To add to this, I also, this also means on any recovery we see and move back up and not only on the way down. First, Malaysia crude palm oil. 
if you have listened to any of my commentaries here on palm oil, you have heard me repeat so, so many times that the mid-August to early November 2022, that's right, August, November 2022, well over a year old, mildly bearish shift pitch walk, the one highlighted in dark blue on my daily chart, was running the show here after and over so, so much time. This mildly bearish pitchfork guided prices more or less lower. Initially in between the upper time, currently at 39.44, and the middle time, currently at 33.11. Then for a while in May and June last year, between the middle time and the lower time, lower time is currently at 26.79, before prices moved back up again to test the upper time in January this year and February, and now going into March. In mid-January and mid-February, we saw breached but they only had the single close over the upper time respectively. Not so this week. We have had multiple closes over this upper time from Tuesday until yesterday. I'm now seriously considering calling this venerable bearish pitchfork broken. Now going back a few steps first, the significant patterns and levels at one time or other within this bearish pitchfork have been the June to September 2023 diamond pattern, the bright red uptrend currently at 37.55, dating from late May 2023. The interesting recent 61.8% Fibonacci line at 35.92 of the late May to late July 2023 move. The purple neckline of the September to November 2023 reverse head and shoulders pattern currently at 39.87. And the February 2011 high at 39.53. At one time or other, these have all acted as support or resistance or resistances that have become supports that have helped drive prices higher and rise to test the previously mentioned upper time in dark blue and thus possibly make a strategic change in the overall longer term bearish perception of this market. Now I did say four weeks ago here that, and I quote, Unlike the other oil seeds and veg oils I looked at at the time, was not wholly concerned with go this one was not wholly concerned with going lower. The bright red trend line, whilst it had been breached, was repaired and intact now, and seemed along with the medium and long moving averages to be supportive. We also had the recent double bottom, bottom pattern here, a bullish pattern, end of quote. Now, to counter these points, the reverse head and shoulders pattern over autumn last year, especially the purple neckline, had been acting as a sort of a, a cap on this market, uh, much as a head and shoulders continuation pattern would be, except it's always going higher each time. I further added back four weeks ago, and I quote, overall, I would suggest watching what the market does at either the blue upper time or the red uptrend and the lesser Fibonacci line at 35.92 to gauge any clues as to what may be next. I suspect with an uptrend and upper time converging, it may not be that long, end of quote. And indeed, we didn't have to wait that long uh, as we were now punching through the upper time and once again testing the purple neckline. Now, there could be an argument put forward that the action as far back as even September last year is a possible, if broken and repaired, bull channel with the breached and repaired uh, red uptrend as the lower bull channel line and the broken and repaired purple neckline as the upper bull channel line. Now, I can see the attraction of such an idea, but I didn't go with it back four weeks ago, and I still don't go with it now. However, I could see the attraction of such a pattern, and so three weeks ago, I drew a potential upper bull channel line for the action since November 2023, and that's highlighted in green on my daily chart, and it's currently at 40.70.70. To verify this pattern, the market would have to break properly break the purple neckline which it hasn't done as yet and also the bearish upper time which it seems to have done now so we are part way to a possible new pattern and a solution as to what is going on i'll finish with what i said three weeks ago and i quote this is a daily chart this this daily chart is getting way too colorful for my liking but it's a necessary coloration to show the key features, end of quote. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted both at the front and at the back of this broadcast.
Copyright is Eddie Tofpik and ADM Investor Services International Limited. And here comes the final important bit.